So if you've ever wanted to set up DAW mode on your PreSonic Studio Live Series 3 mixer, then I'm here to show you the best way to get it set up quick and easy, so that way you can get your workflow under control. This video is sponsored by DistroKid, and a little later I will tell you about some features that you will want to know about. Hey guys, I'm Dr. McFarland, and welcome back to the channel. So after owning the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 mixer for a few years now, I finally figured out how to set up DAW mode, and it's actually pretty easy. So let me show you my screen here, and I'll show you how to get set up. So first thing I had to do was go on Amazon and buy a Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapter. And this is the Apple version. There's another YouTuber that said it was better to get the actual Apple version instead of like a cheap knockoff because they tend to work a little bit better. So that's what I got. And I simply just plug and play and connect the adapter for my computer to the back of the PreSonus Studio Live where the ethernet port is. And there's two different ports. There's one for controlling audio. And there's one other one for controlling the UC net. So if you're looking at the face of the mixer right here, you can see that you got the UC net button. We're gonna press that. Then I'm actually using Mackie control emulation. There's another version called Huey, which is more of a Pro Tools thing. But I'm using Mackie control. And then it's pretty much already set up. You don't need to worry about IP addresses or anything like that. Cause we're not actually hooking up to a Wi-Fi server where it needs to recognize a certain IP address. We're just hardwiring from the back of the unit straight to my Thunderbolt adapter and I'm good to go. I did press the renew lease option and it kind of thought for a second and it made all the proper connections. I am doing a software control as well, which means I can use the stop, play and record buttons to actually control the transport functions within the DAW. But right now I'm actually recording this audio inside of Reaper and that's capturing my voice and any audio coming out of Mixbus. So I'm not gonna stop that right now, but just know that that's how I have that set up. So let me show you what you need to do once you get past this point. So if you go to Mixbus Preferences, we're gonna go down to Control Surfaces and we're gonna choose Mackie. So if you don't have it checked yet, just check the Mackie. It'll pop up with a show protocol setting. And I have mine set to UCNet MIDI Studio Live 16 Main. And I'm not really sure what the button click and the backlight does. I'll just go ahead and click those for fun. And there is a fader sensitivity that you can adjust right here. You can hit recalibrate faders or discover Mac devices. So we'll just leave that down for now. And there are function keys as well. So if you want to control the track, you can just go in here and find which one you want. And I haven't really messed with any of this stuff as well but there may be a way to get that set up. So after a short conversation with Harrison Mixbus, I have discovered that a lot of the functionality is not really accessible in DAW mode right now because obviously PreSonus Studio Live is a PreSonus product and it's mainly meant to be used for the Studio One software which integrates seamlessly. But I don't really use Studio One, I use Reaper and I use Mixbus. So those are the two main DAWs that I want full functionality over. But as of right now, I can't get the full functionality. So. My main point of this video is to show you my workflow and how I get around the limitations of DAW mode, meaning I can't really control compression or EQ or anything like that from the actual DAW, but I'm mainly just using the faders as a nice big control surface to automate groups or quickly mix you know, large sections of faders like background vocals or maybe drums or anything like that. There are times during a project when you don't always work by yourself. You may be working with a producer, a drummer, a co-writer for your lyrics, a mixing engineer, or a mastering engineer, and you want to have a good way to split the profits between the whole team. Well, DistroKid provides such a feature called Teams on their website. It's easy to set up just by inserting your collaborator's email address and typing in the percentage that you want to give them for the actual song or project. And once you submit all the information, they receive an email saying, hey, you've been added to this team. And all they have to do is copy and paste the invite code into their dashboard. And now they can receive the split of the royalties whenever the song sells or gets streamed. 
And don't worry if they're not already a part of DistroKid, there is a 50% off discount on their first year just by signing up through the email that they received the invite code from. So this makes it really easy for them to get signed up and start their journey on making even more music and distributing it through DistroKid. So thanks to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. And now back to me showing you how to use DAW mode in Mixbus 32C. Uh, so now at this point, I'm going to press the doll button up here and you can see that the faders move to associate themselves with the actual tracks within the doll, which is great. So if we take a look at this session right here, I have some background vocals up on top. I have the lead vocal, piano, cello, and a bunch of electric guitars, which I'm actually going to go ahead and group these a little bit. And I'll show you why here in a second. And we'll make sure these are green of some sort. And more guitars, more guitars. I'll go ahead and group these. And we have a bass track and we have drum tracks down here. All right, so the best way I found to actually use DAW mode, there's these mix buttons over here that you can see. They're highlighted in yellow. And those pretty much associate with the MIDI inputs, tracks, instrument, aux, buses, outputs, and user that you see across the screen of the actual PreSonus mixer. And if I hit two, that should show me all my instruments and I can scroll through here. You can see that the names change on the screen. And then you can even see mix buses if you keep scrolling through with the numbers. Okay, mix six is showing me my actual buses. A mix five is gonna show me my VCAs. So I have a vocal VCA, a mix bus VCA, which is all down here. And mix A actually shows the user functionality. So let me show you this. So if I choose this group right here of electric guitars and I hit mix eight, it's gonna show you just those three faders for those three tracks. And since they're grouped together, I can move one fader and all the other faders will move in conjunction with it which is so cool. Now, if I want to individually control the faders, I can always remix it like this. I find a good balance. But let's say I want to mix this pass of cellos right here, which is two separate parts. So let me solo these up. And now since these tracks are highlighted, I can just hit mix eight. The faders are going to readjust. And now I can actually go in and I can change the balance of these. And however I have that saved, I can go in and engage the group and then now they're all going to move in conjunction with each other. Okay, so check this out. Let me play this. Let's go down to the drums and let's listen to those. So we're gonna highlight all this and we're gonna loop it and let's play this section. All right, so I'm gonna hit mix eight. And now it's gonna show me just the drum tracks right here, which is really cool. Now, if it has more than eight tracks, I need to hit the next so I can see the last remaining tracks there. But I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna call this a kick group and I'm gonna make sure these are blue. All right, so I got the kick drums right here that I can control just with one fader because they're grouped together. But let's say I want to go in and change the balance of those kicks. So I'm going to uncheck the group. Then now I can just move each individual fader as I want. And let's go ahead and listen to this section here. So there's a really low kick. All right, that one has the most snaps, so I'll have that higher in the mix. So let's just say that balance is good. So now I can just engage the group, and now I can move all three faders together. All right, so that's kind of neat. Let's bring in some overheads. And now I can balance the kick with the overhead. Same thing with the drums. Eight. So it's very quick and easy just to hit a track and then hit mix eight. And now I can only see that fader. Now I can control how much room I have in the mix. 
or if you can go to my snares so I'm going to put in its own separate group and hit mix 8 so now I see these two tracks right here So even though I don't have full control over the panning, compression, and EQ on each individual track, I can still just use my mouse, click whatever track I want to be on, and then I can just use my mouse to change the panning, go up here, go to EQ, I can adjust EQs. But instead of using the mouse for always changing the fader, I can just use my left hand on the mixer. And I can quickly adjust balances with the faders on the actual physical board, which is great. All right, now for example, let's just say we want to go in and we want to automate something. So let's go in and let's automate this cello track, for instance. Okay, so we're going to go to A for automation. We're going to do fader. And we're actually going to go in and hit right. Okay, so check this out. All right, so if I hit play and then just start moving the fader, you can see that it's riding automation in real time, which is really cool. I can bring it down, I can bring it up. All right, so that's kind of fun. So then I can go back and put it in play mode and now it'll actually play back my actual automation. So check this out. That's so cool. So instead of doing everything by the mouse and putting it in draw mode and drawing in different stuff, I can just use the fader now and control automation from the fader, which is great. All right, so now let's go to the band VCA down here and let's just play around with some automation. So I'm gonna click on A, click on fader, and the line should start playing, you know, wherever this level is at negative 0.4. So if I hit play right here, Let's put it in this section. Here's my band VCA. I can go ahead and write automation for that. So let's just say, for example, that I want to redo that or adjust some things. I can always go in with my mouse and move things up and down like that. But it's putting in all those little bitty blocks for the automation that I did, which is great. I can do these for reverse, for delay throws, whatever I want. All right, so you can see there's many possibilities even without the control over individual pan, EQ, and compression on each track. But working with the faders is really great for speeding up my workflow and being more artistic with the actual movement of faders, getting the balance in the mix and not just using the mouse all the time, which is really, really cool. So once you get used to clicking on tracks and then hitting mix eight, then you can easily see all the faders right here. It's just way more intuitive to go over and reach a fader versus moving faders with a mouse and just clicking around the screen all the time. So if you are new to mixing and need a guide to help you through getting your studio set up and all the ways to start recording your own music, then I have a free guide for you down in the description 
Go ahead and click on that link. And you can put in an email address to download that free guide and show you all the things you need to do to start your journey into music production. So thanks guys for watching. I'm Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.